Hey ceramic students, today I'm going to show you how to make a double pinch pot rattle, or at least the base of it. Uh, in your kit you need to get out your seven pounds of red earthenware, also known as terracotta clay, and you need your clay cutter. Open up your bag of clay. You need two decent handfuls of clay. When I say handfuls, don't grab the clay and smush your fingers into it because if you do that, you're gonna create air pockets and that's bad, okay? So I'm gonna take my tool, I wrap it around my hand, pull it nice and tight, drag it through the clay, and then I'm gonna chop it in half so that I have these lovely cuts and those should should pull right apart. Once I'm done cutting my clay, you absolutely want to close up your bag of clay to keep it from drying out. Take some time, cup your hands, pat both chunks of clay into spheres. You want them to be roughly equal. But if they're not, I mean, this one's obviously a little bit bigger than that one, and that's okay. So, the name of the game is you want the walls of your pinch pot to be equal. Oh, and I forgot. If you got rings on or bracelets, you might want to take them off. But the name of the game for pinch pots is you want your walls of your pinch pots to be equal from the bottom to the top. And in this particular case, you want the walls to go straight up or curve in a little bit. You don't want them to spread out. So I'm gonna take my thumb, and for all you ladies out there with long fingernails, this might be a little challenging, but I've had at least two or three ladies who have done this this week, and they do just fine. So I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom without smashing my finger through. I'm gonna wrap my fingers around the ball of clay give it a squeeze and a little turn. And as I do that, the clay is slowly working its way up. So I'm feeling the wall. I'm feeling for any bumps and lumps. If there's a bump, I squeeze that bump until it's the same thickness as the clay around it. So I'm looking for even, smooth walls. I'm not pulling it out this way, I'm trying to keep it in this way. So don't pull it out, keep it in. You also want to keep your rim a little on the thicker side. That way when you combine the two halves together, they have a nice chunk of clay to attach to. So notice down in the bottom, you want it to be not so thick a lot of young people leave the bottoms thick. Don't do that. You want to utilize all of your clay. So if you leave a big old wad of clay at the bottom of your pinch pot, you're not using up all your clay. You're not using it to its maximum potential. So a handful of clay should get you a pinch pot roughly about this size. And if you've seen that Ed puzzle that I assigned a couple of weeks ago, the one with the amazing weirdo pinch potter. He, uh, he used it as a meditative practice, so he'd just sit there, pinch his clay. You also could use it as a meditative practice. That's fine. So you're looking for nice, even walls. If you are a person who has hot hands, your hands are gonna heat up the clay and they're gonna start to maybe crack the edges. If that's the case, just use your thumbnail. Just gently smooth out those cracks. Makes it nice. But, so I'm done with that pinch pot. I'm gonna set it on its rim because if I set it on its bottom, it's gonna get flat. You want it to stay around, so I set it on its rim. So I'm gonna do one more. And as I'm making these pinch pots, I'm thinking about what do I want to turn this into? Is it just going to be a crazy carved shape? If 
you're gonna carve into, oh, look at that crack. If you're gonna carve into your pinch pot, that's cool. Do that, I like carving. But just be aware when you're building it that you might wanna leave it a little on the thicker side. Um, I also wanna say that depending on how you want your rattle to sound has some different variants that you need to consider. So if you want your pinch pot to have kind of a ring tone, like, hold on. If you want it to sound like this, it's a fish. Her walls are super thin, and so the beads on the inside, when they hit it, make the whole vessel ring. If you make it super thick, this one's super thick and it's a lot more clunky. Uh, this one has been carved a lot and it has holes in it. You see that hole right there? You can even see the BBs inside if you look close enough. The hole allows uh, air and sound to escape so it's a little bit louder. Yes, you can carve holes into it, but just make sure that the beads that you make will not escape because if, if you make big holes and tiny beads, eventually, after you've shaken it enough, all the beads are gonna fall out and you're just gonna have a thing, a thing without a sound. So that's pretty good. It's not perfect, but you can see that those kind of meet up and I can, it's clay, it moves. I can make it work. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a burrito of clay BBs. So the things that you need in order to make your burrito is some more clay. So I'm just gonna cut off a tiny little bit. I'm not gonna manhandle off a little chunk, but I'm just gonna slice off a little bit. So I've got a chunk there. Seal that up. You also know that I have a paper towel. You can use a piece of paper, a paper towel, anything that's gonna burn out in the kiln. So this paper burns at Fahrenheit 451 degrees. So I'm gonna turn this into a Play-Doh snake. And if you haven't played with Play-Doh and made Play-Doh snakes, I'm sad for you. We should remedy that. So let me get you some Play-Doh if you've never played with Play-Doh. So this Play-Doh snake, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm gonna roll it out pretty skinny because I like a, little, a lot of tiny little beads. Yeah, a lot of tiny little beads. Um, I think I'm gonna speed this up now. So prepare for warp speed. Oh wait, before we go into warp speed, make sure you have your cutting tool. You have one of these sharp pointy tools or you have a popsicle stick that has been cut into the shape of a wooden knife and you're just gonna use that to choppy choppy. All right, so now that you've got your BBs made, you need a wet sponge, not dripping wet, but wet nonetheless. You need your slicer tool. This is also known as a cleanup tool. You're gonna pick up your one of your halves and you need to score the edge. So this is not scoring. What scoring look like? It's pretty deep. So you're gonna slice it and you can see I'm slicing pretty deep. I'm slicing at an angle. I'm going all the way around the rim because what that does is it opens up the clay, makes teeth, interlocking teeth, 
So not only is this one getting uh, scored, but the other one's getting scored too. So the teeth are gonna interlock. And when you blend them together or weld them together, they are gonna think that they are one piece of clay, which is what you want. So I've gone one way, I usually go back the other way, just kind of crisscross applesauce it, you know? And it should look wretched or ratchet or ugly or all those things. So that's not very pretty, right? I tow it up. I'm gonna do the same thing to this guy. We'll slicey slice slice. Slice, 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 slice. Chop, 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 chop. If you don't do this, it's probably gonna fall apart. Same goes for, like, if you make a bear's head and you wanna put cute little ears on your bear's head. If you don't score and blend the ears on as an attachment, any attachment, it's probably gonna fall off. All right, so I've done that. Now I need to make my burrito. Oop. So I've got this bit of clay here on a paper towel. These look like rabbit pellets. Those of you who raise rabbits, you know what I'm talking about, right? You. So, thank you, Jesse, for teaching me this technique, but you're gonna roll it up. And the reason why you use a paper towel is because if you don't, those beads are gonna stick to the wall of the inside of your pot and then it won't rattle. So you roll it up and then you spiral it up. And this is your burrito packet. I'm gonna stash that inside. I'm gonna take my sponge and I'm just gonna gently put some water around the rim. You see how it's just kind of moistened? Don't go hog wild. It shouldn't be dripping wet. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna combine the two together. Oh, Mrs. Connor, they don't quite fit. That's fine. Make them fit. So I'm gonna close this up a little bit more so that it fits this smaller part. And I'm just gonna kind of coerce it together. So I'm just kind of gently kind of twisting and wiggling it together. Yes, beautiful. Next thing I wanna do is run my tool back and forth across. I like to use the curved side. I call this Frankenstein stitching. So I'm dragging the clay from the top pot to the bottom pot, locking it together. I'm not squeezing it terribly. It should look pretty bumpy and lumpy, and that's okay. There's still time to smooth it out, don't freak out. And I'm gonna turn the whole thing, go back the other way, drag clay from the other side, down. Isn't that delightful? Mm. Yes, Mrs. Connor. I quite like that. It's very satisfying. Well, I do try to please my students with satisfying and fulfilling projects. Oh yes, I see that. And there you have it. This is what you need. Isn't that delightful? No! It's ratchety! Yeah, you know that metal tool, that flexible metal rib in your bucket? You can take that and smooth it out, or you can use your thumbnail. But do not use a wet sponge. This is a no-no. Do not use a wet sponge. Do not put more water on it. So, use any of the tools that are in your bucket, but don't put more water on it. So, this is your assignment for this week, is to make your base pinch pot rattle so you need to make not one, but two pinch pots, one burrito with uh, clay beads inside, put the whole thing in there and combine it together. I would like for you to take an in-progress picture of two pinch pots with your burrito, and then one where it's like this, where it's all combined, looking good, ready to be turned into something. I also need not one, not two, but three ideas for what you have for your ideas for turning it into something. So, what's it gonna be? Is it gonna be some sort of weird abstract 
thing. Is it gonna be a cat in a top hat? Is it gonna be some sort of strange mollusk? I don't know. I don't even know what this is, but it's some crazy mohawk guy that's red, white, and, well, there's not much white, but red and blue. And then one of my favorites, Mike Wazowski. Um, or maybe you just carve into it. Maybe you add some elements and then you carve into it. So one thing that I do want to add is all of the rattles that I've shown you that are finished, they're made with white clay. This clay, this clay will turn red. It turns into like the same color as a terracotta planting pot. So be aware that this is a different color of clay. Now that I'm done with this, I need to get out a gray plastic bag. It looks like this. And I want to put my project inside the bag because I don't want it to dry out. So until I'm ready to work on it again, I'm going to get all of the air out of it. I like to twist it up, make a loop, kind of pull a loop through. And then this is ready to be set carefully somewhere. I like to put it in the top of my bucket that I sent home. So this is your assignment. Do it. Catch you later.